Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Since the Terminus people on Walking Dead have kind of been added as cannibals, I wanted to do a bonus video explaining who the hunters are in the comics since they share a lot of similarities. It's also possible we could see some comic book moments from the Fear the Hunters storyline in the comics, so I'll try to explain what those are whenever I post my review tonight. There is also a new round of the giveaways starting tonight, so all you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a comment. While I was making this, they also announced two new characters, so I'll explain who they are at the end of the video. So just a general spoiler warning for everything through the season five premiere, but as mentioned, the hunters are a group of cannibals in the comics. They're not exactly like the termites, but they appear in issues 61 through 66. So if you do want to read along in the comics, you should check out volume 11, Fear the Hunters. It just combines all those. The origins of the termites and the origins of the hunters in the comics are just a little bit different, but the leader of the hunters is named Chris, and he does look a little bit like Gareth. So just a couple differences between the termites and the hunters. The termites came from Terminus, like a very large place. The hunters were localized to a very small area. And even though Terminus just exploded and there's probably only a few of them left, the hunters were always a small group. The other big difference is the reason they became cannibals. On the show, the termites only became cannibals after the crazy people took over Terminus and then they took it back. The hunters became cannibals just because they ran out of food and they decided that hunting people was easier than hunting animals. Scott Gimple compared Terminus to a really sinister episode of The Office, like The Office with cannibals. The hunters were never really like that. I mean, they were always just a little bit more evil. They did treat what they were doing in a mundane way, but I never thought of the hunters in the comics as being like an episode of The Office. One of the things that makes the comic book characters just way crazier is that they ate their children. And at Terminus, they did eat each other, but I don't think that they went that far. We actually never saw any children at Terminus. They probably just avoided that on the show altogether, just dealing with that altogether. Or AMC told them, no, you can't eat children. If you remember when they were on the kill floor, that body right there was actually confirmed to be Gareth's brother. So they definitely did eat each other, like no one was safe at Terminus. I mean, you became food if you died. At least they didn't kill children. Maybe that's actually why they decided to kill Lizzie and Mika before everyone got to Terminus. The way the survivors meet up with the hunters in the comics is a little bit different too. They're essentially already on the road to Washington DC. And in episode one, Abraham was just kind of teasing, telling everyone about that. I do think they'll head there eventually in the show, but in the comics, they essentially run into Father Gabriel and the hunters en route. They don't get super specific about where they are on the map, but it's somewhere between Atlanta and Washington, D.C. Scott Kimple did tease on the show this year that we would see some familiar big places that had changed, so I think they will go to Atlanta at some point. It's just that a few of the comic book locations are very specific to some places that we've seen in the trailers, like most notably Father Gabriel's church, which becomes part of a big hunter storyline. It's all just more evidence that they're going to be doing some hunter-specific moments during tonight's episode. As a group though, the hunters are just like a crucible for Rick and the survivors to emerge from being that much stronger. And as we saw last season, Rick evolved from Farmer Rick to Crazy Rick, or went back to being Crazy Rick, depending on how you look at it. Even if they do comic book moments tonight, I think that the hunter storyline will diverge on the show. I think there'll be some big differences. For instance, even though Gareth's jacket looks just like Chris's, then obviously he's an amalgam of Chris in the comic books. His storyline in the comics is relatively self-contained. Gareth, last season after the finale, was up to cast regular. They only do things like that when they're intending on using actors in most of the episodes. So I think that Gareth will just have a few crisp moments. I think it's interesting that they've been using the hunt or be hunted language in a lot of the promos. It just implies that Rick and the survivors are just going to be total badasses, or they're not going to be as easy prey anymore. We didn't see Gareth die last week. I do think he survived, and obviously he's a cast regular, so they're not going to kill him in the first episode. It's possible that the survivors could capture him or some of the termites. Rick really wants to kill everyone, so I don't think that they're going to let a bunch of people live. Somebody asked Scott Gimple about the big villain this season, like if we were going to see a big governor type villain. He did say there would be someone as evil as the governor. They're not going to do another governor. I mean, it'll just be someone that's really, really bad. I don't know that that's going to be Gareth. He's like a cannibal hipster, and hipsters are mostly harmless. I mean, they're mostly annoying. Feel free to make any evil hipster jokes you want, though. I just think that Gareth is going to be a much bigger character than Chris was in the comics. I'm trying to purposefully avoid, you know, how the Hunter storyline goes down. So if you have read the comics, just please use spoiler tags if you want to talk about it in the comments. I would like to see the survivors capture Gareth. I mean, it'd be interesting to see Rick go super dark and just start killing everyone. 
I don't necessarily think that's going to happen, though, even though they implied that that's what he wants to do. Just look forward to the survivors hunting the termites, you know, hunt the hunters. It's really interesting to think about how far Rick is going to go this season. He is the center of the group, even though it can be relatively balanced. I mean, Carol's the big force, and Daryl obviously has a lot of influence. But I do see a lot of Rick's craziness kind of bleeding out into the other characters. Like Sasha, for instance, kind of looks like she's turning into Andrea from the comics. I'm actually really looking forward to that because Andrea in the comics was a big badass. Just in general, I feel like this season's going to be really big for Andrew Lincoln. I'm really excited to see him just be absolutely nuts. I know a lot of people are wondering how long he's going to stay with the show. It's possible he could just ride it right into the ground. He doesn't get paid as much as, say, like Big Bang Theory actors get paid, but it is a pretty sweet deal. And I mean, the fandom is so huge that it could sustain the show indefinitely. There is that crazy talk about AMC wanting to go through season 12. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. I think a lot of it's going to have to do with how well the companion show does. That's just what they're calling the spinoff show that's going to start next year. That actually reminds me, so they're casting two new characters. They've already picked one of them. They're still looking for the other one. The first one is Andrea Breckenridge from American Horror Story. She's going to play someone named Samantha. It's not someone from the comics, but it's possible they're making her someone from the comics and just giving her a different name, just like they did with Gareth. Her character description reads, Attractive, strong, smart, charming, inarticulate woman with a vulnerable side. She's a mother with a bohemian spirit and a talented artist. We're not going to see her for a while. They just announced her casting last week, and they've already shot about half the season, so we definitely won't see her till next year. It's possible if the group makes it to Washington, D.C. by next year, that's where we'll see her. She'll be one of the Alexandria Safe Zone characters. If you never saw her on American Horror Story, she usually played some sort of temptress with really gruesome consequences. Like, if you had sex with her, you were probably going to die. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be having sex with Rick or anything like that. It just sounds like they're casting her to be an attractive person. The other new character is named Donna, which is kind of funny because that's Billy and Ben's mom's name from the comics. If you remember, they gave that storyline to Lizzie and Mika. They haven't announced any actors for the role yet. They're still casting women. It's rumored that Kate Burton from Scandal is their top pick. But again, that would be another character to show up in the second half of the season. There's also the new character named Noah, who we haven't seen yet. He was cast a long time ago, so presumably we're going to see him sometime in the first half of this season. He's being played by Tyler James Williams from Everybody Hates Chris. He's not specifically someone from the comics, but it sounds like he's going to be in at least a few episodes. So I don't think we'll meet him until after the survivors leave Father Gabriel's church, which I do think we're going to see tonight. I will be posting my episode 2 review after the episode airs tonight, so be sure to subscribe to get that. If you have any special requests for bonus videos like comic stuff or TV show stuff, I'm totally happy to do both. I'm also probably going to stream some of the Telltale game on my video game channel. There's a link for that in the description. So everyone get pumped. The survivors are going to kick some serious ass tonight. You can click here for my episode 2 video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it. And click here for this week's Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five and I'll see you guys in a little bit.